But Nico, we are very, very lucky to be joined right off the hop here by the president of the Capital City Supporters Group, Bryce Crossman. Bryce, welcome to the show. We really appreciate you joining us. And uh, thanks for having me. Let, let's get right into it. Atletico Ottawa, one of the most successful clubs since their uh, first season. And they're still having a great year this year, especially with all the transfers. How excited was the supporters group heading into the year? Well, first, I, I think uh, as a fan of this team who's followed them for a long time, like since the beginning, and being a long time Ottawa fan of Woody. Uh, I think we've only had one season that we as fans were pretty happy with, and that was 2022 when we did make it to the finals. Uh, last year, we had a big letdown. So I wouldn't say that we've been successful since the hop. Uh, but in the this offseason, we thought that we retooled this lineup. Uh, we thought we brought in the players we needed. Uh, we thought that we would uh, have the season that it seemed to be for those first two months. Uh, and now this doesn't feel like what we were expecting at all. Well, I, Nick, Nick, what do you got to say about that? I mean, it seems like, uh, would you agree with that? What, that they haven't been successful since the hop or that they well, are... I feel I feel like the narrative around Ottawa is always like, um, you know, you everyone on the outside, it seems like they've been uh, one of the top successful clubs. But right there, Bryce, it seems like you're saying like, you know, it hasn't been as good as uh, it may be portrayed. Well, definitely last season was a, was a big letdown. Because last season, uh, you know, we make it to the finals. We do really well. Uh, we're kind of muddled in the beginning of the year. We bring in Zapater. All of a sudden, we go on a big run. Uh, we're looking good. And then we miss out on the playoffs in the last week. So that was looking good. Yeah, we might regain some of that success of the previous year. Uh, but it was a big letdown at the end. So we felt that we needed change in the offseason. Uh, some of us would have liked more change in the offseason. Uh, maybe not just players, but we went into the season thinking that we had it all right together. Uh, and to start the year, they were on fire. And, you know, if that had continued, um, we'd be feeling really good. But the last six weeks haven't been great. The last four games have been terrible. Uh, right now, we've been waiting for them to wake up in every game. Like, oh, one bad game is okay. Can you turn that around and play better the next week? But when we go out there, it seems like the same thing over and over. We're seeing players that aren't committing uh, and right now, we can't even tell who might step up and, and become the leader we need on the field right now. Uh, they, they, Bryce, they, they might need you to to maybe have a word with them uh, if things, uh, you know, you don't like what you see. <laughs> I, well, but, I, I will say the Capital City, we uh, we put on a lot of content and some of the best content we have is actually uh, our writers. We've got a writer shed that puts out content every week. Uh, we do player ratings after every game uh, and they're quite honest in those player ratings and we're not fanboying when we're when we're writing or or editing those things we're pretty truthful in what we're seeing on the field um so you don't have to dig too too deep uh we're publicly putting out there how we're feeling about the uh the success and the failures of this well you know just hearing you talk i mean uh it's extreme but i mean this is kind of what you want the fans to be like you want them demanding uh, and have like high expectations, you know, as, as, as you speak there, Bryce, you kind of talk about, uh, you're saying we, uh, I mean, to me, Capital City Supporter Group is just people have just been hurling abuse at me uh, <laughs> since they've come at uh, coming hey, to the league. It's just because you don't stay on your line, buddy. That's no, it. Listen, no problem. Listen, I, I, I don't mind hearing it all. Uh, man, the refs would love that one. Eh? Well, you but you know, like uh, any, any true sport, supporter group, the minute you put on our jersey, this would all change. Okay, well, Vancouver. I, right now, you cut me open, and eagle flies out of me because I'm I'm a I'm a true born eagle. So but no yeah, comment you, but, on that. But you're you're also backing up a Fury legend, right? That's why it's so tough. You know, they make them so good in Ottawa. But what I was gonna say is, Bryce, if yeah. you let me get a word in, is, uh, you say we Capital City Supporters Group. Who is we? Like, uh, what does the group consist of? Uh, you know, obviously, you are the president, as we said. Well, first of all, you're in the capital, and you you go by the president. How do you not go by prime minister of the Capital City Supporters Group? No, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not the founder of this group, uh, and the president <laughs> was a term that was there. Um, I have I I've been filling this role since before the last season because the founder and president Daniel Duff uh, needed to step down. 
So uh, all of last season, I was an interim president. Uh, and then in elections in the fall, I, I then became president for a two-year term. Uh, but also in this offseason, we actually restructured uh, Capital City a lot. Uh, before this, it was a handful of people that kind of made all of this go. Um, uh, it was funded uh, by a handful of us uh, for whatever we needed uh, to get. Uh, in the offseason, we decided we were going to put a bigger structure in place uh, with more people involved, more directors of some subcommittees and things like that. Uh, and we brought in a, a paid membership structure. Uh, so uh, right now we have uh, approximately 120 paid members in our group, uh, which is about one quarter of the size of our supporter section. Um, not all of the members that we have are people that, that sit with us in the supporter section. We have a lot of people that have joined uh, from elsewhere in, in the stadium just because they believe and want to support what we do. Um, so, uh, But we have a, a social media team that handles that stuff. Like I said, we have a writer shed that has, I think we have a, at least 10 writers. Uh, you know, we have someone who's doing player ratings. We have someone doing a match day review. Uh, we have um, we have a reporter with credentials who attends all the press conferences. Uh, we do write ups on those pre and post game. Um, we also have some other one off articles we write from time to time. Um, so that stuff's going on every week. Uh, we've got a podcast, uh, ATO after the whistle, that drops every week. Uh, that's a pretty good one. That's yeah. Do you do anything else? You all know this is the longest list. You guys are full thing. Do you guys have an academy system, uh, eights through fourteens, and the graduates to the first team? I, I have guys... a son who plays competitive U eleven. Uh, we have a couple <laughs> uh, sevens teams out of our group. Uh, we will oh, be man. competing on Saturday. The uh, ATO is running a, 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 a as part of Capital Pride is running a sevens tournament, and we'll have a team in that. Uh, Capital City will. Capital City SG will have a team in the uh, in the ATO Pride uh, Sevens tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. even cool! You know, I was I was kind of bantering about that, and then you you just put me in my place and then say, "Yeah, well, you, thank you for reminding me, Nico. We actually are doing that as well." Yeah, I mean, not uh, not not consistently, but, but are you guys the best? Are you guys the biggest? Are you guys clearly the best? What's this? In I Ottawa? always hear you guys call Ottawa's massive. Are you well, saying okay. like your supporters so that, group is the biggest the, in CPL? The Ottawa massive thing was before that 2022 season. And that's something that was tongue in cheek started by us. Okay. Because we, the team was not massive. So we started it as, no, we are massive. We are. And in the team rose that, that year and played and became a big thing. Right. As I, in, I, we I as created, in capital city, I made the 20 foot, five foot tall, massive banner that we had it during the playoffs. Right. Yeah. Like that's the thing that we started. Uh, so we feel we are massive. Now, I'm not I'm not going to uh, denigrate any of the other supporter groups out there. Uh, you know, when yeah, I was at Forge, on, I was on, at Forge on the weekend and plenty of them we met up with and, and, and talked with and stuff. And there's no real animosity between us. But, you know. You why, wait, 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 Bryce, them. Bryce. Wait, why? Is that because you guys all can see you're all in it for the same thing? Like you just love supporting local footy? So you can just yeah. understand the commonality that you guys have amongst one another. I see the supporter culture in the CPL closer to fans in the CFL than I see it as fans of European football. Okay, so like CFL, uh, there are people that every year they'll go to the Grey Cup. Uh, you know, that's their that's their trip every year with their friends. They go to the Grey Cup and they hang out with other fans from the other teams. And then you hate each other during the game, but you party for the week. Right. OK, I kind of see that the same way. I know that we have a bunch of people that are going to uh, to Halifax for the uh, August 24th game in Halifax. I know that the night before those guys will be at a pub with Wanderer supporters. We've already got that planned out. We'll hang out with them post game. But during the game, no, 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 we're not friends during the game. But you come hang out with us after. Like you know. there's a two hour gap in the middle there where you don't talk. But yeah. every, other than that, it's it's all free reign. Everyone's everyone's there to enjoy well, loving I, the I sport. Think, <laughs> like so, it's a Canadian thing. Well, if they do it in the CFL and they do it in the CPL, it's a Canadian thing. A little bit, but it's also like look at where you're at. Okay, you're playing soccer in the CPL, right? There are plenty of places better to play than the CPL. So it's no way, not... no way, Bryce. <laughs> but we can't be like we're the biggest, we're the we're the we're the end all of soccer culture, you know. Like we're still trying to build this 
build this up. So, uh, you know, we're we're in uh, conversations and, and dialogues, uh, chats with other supporters, with the other presidents of other supporters groups. We do some things like these jerseys last year. This was a cross Canada thing uh, where we each got the same jersey, but we have our badge on it uh, for for pride uh, causes and for fundraising. So we, there's a bunch of things we do across the board in Canada, and we don't want to see any of the teams fail. So we're not happy when we're looking at Winnipeg. Uh, we're seeing them not getting support from uh, from their owners for what they're doing. When we're seeing their numbers drop, we're a little concerned with Forge with all the success and having their numbers and attendance drop. I don't know if you noticed, but last week uh, when the, the numbers came out, we averaged four people less than Forge right for this year per game. Only four, uh, which isn't bad considering how we play and how Forge plays. So, but we don't want to see any of these teams pull on Edmonton and end up not having uh, a team for the people there to support. So I would rather help out a supporters group somewhere else, maybe suggest things they can do better. Do you need help? Uh, I'd rather do that than constantly berate them. Uh, now, on Twitter, our guys will berate other people. We'll we'll start those things, but it's getting people talking about the CPO. So. It's more it's more tongue in cheek trying to have fun and trying to get conversation flowing as opposed to genuine berating. Hate. I get what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, in conversation with Brian Bryce Crossman, uh, Capital City Supporters Group president. And Bryce, you talk about trying to grow the game. And is there any any initiatives some of the supporters groups are trying to take to help grow the game across the country that you'd you'd like to share or anything that you guys do specifically with Capital City? that you try to you try to do because I think it's really important to try to get more people out to, to watching that. Yeah, I think as a supporters group, I don't think we do anything that that others aren't doing. Uh we have we have a, a pub here, Glebe Central Pub, that we've partnered with for the last four years. Uh so we do all our official watch parties there. Uh every single away game, uh national team games, Copa America, we were there. Uh we also hosted a bunch of World Cup stuff uh when those are on. So we have a place where all our members are welcome to hang out. Um, uh, that's been good. Um, otherwise, I don't think. I think for the first few years, uh, the team itself didn't market well in Ottawa. I think uh, if you knew and were following them, that's the way you got the info. But I think uh, a lot of the game atmosphere and a lot of uh, the visibility outside of the stadium was up to us and our members and what we were doing. Uh, and, and that included online. I think we put out more things than than the club initially. Um, they've done a lot better now uh, that they have some more uh, dedicated people to to the local scene. There's a couple of people that now deal with local connections uh, and partnerships uh, that was missing before. Um, so they are doing better and that's less on us. Um, I think one thing that needs to happen in the CPO I know. Here we go. Here we go. Well, scheduling, especially for us, scheduling has not made it so that we can do comfortable road trips and support the team. There's, uh, like I said, we've done two road trips in the last three weeks. We did a game at York um, because the only game that was those Hamilton and York are really the only two feasible bus trips for us. Right. 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 Because we're not taking 18 hours to Halifax. Which is the next closest. Um, so the York game, Friday afternoon or Friday evening game. So you have to take a day off work. We're going there. You're getting back at 2 a.m. Uh, the Forge game, a Saturday, Saturday evening game. Because yeah. uh, our two options for Hamilton this year were uh, last Saturday or Thanksgiving. Perfect. I, I can't get a, sense. <laughs> I can't get a bus of people for Thanksgiving. I was lucky to get like two thirds of a bus. Uh, for last Saturday, but it's a night game. So get on the bus at noon, get back to Ottawa at 3 a.m. Again, if that's a 1 p.m. game on a Saturday, we're down, we're back. It's great. Uh, but I don't think there's anyone in the CPL office that is thinking Ottawa and Hamilton should play at one o'clock on Saturdays at either place. Either of those places puts that bus on the road full of fans 
It gives you that full fan experience in the stadium. That gets your rivalries going. Uh, that makes this uh, like a real league. Yeah, so, I mean the the CPL is 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 has you know has little things that they're still trying to iron out. For sure. Um, I'm assume I I disagree with your point. I I bet you there is somebody that did have that thought when making the schedule, but it probably got voted for down. again. No, nah, it's not. It's not even that serious. But you know, it's like something happened because you know Hamilton, the the, the Tiger Cats, or oh, the Red oh, Blacks sure. have a game and stuff like. There's just stuff still with the CPL that they're trying to iron out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I love your passion right now, Bryce. I think we we get you talking about uh, the team, sure. uh, uh, the season, Ottawa. I mean, for me right now, it seems like you might be more negative than I was thinking because. Me as a uh, competitor against uh, Ottawa, I'm like, good team, good club, good fans. Um, seems like uh, a, a positive uh, thing. I believe you guys sit in second right now. Is that is that live oh, yeah. table? Is that where you're at? Oh, yeah. I am much too unhappy for someone with a team in second. But the, <laughs> the, the, the thing is that it wasn't too long ago that we were 12 points clear in first. Right? It is true. So. I think we've got two points on the last five, uh, something like that. Like it's, it's most it's, difficult it's, time of the year to play the summer. Oh, it's the most difficult the time. Summer. Oh, I forgot we're the only team playing in the summer. No, but no. <laughs> if you're gonna go through a downswing, middle summer could be it. No, I think I think the issue is that we know we have the players. We know that we have the players that should be able to play and put this together. We know that two years ago, our defense was incredible. Uh, we had a back line that was impenetrable. Uh, and this year, we're giving up easy goals in the box. You know, uh, if you saw Tristan's goals on the weekend, uh, those were gimmies. And I don't understand. I don't understand why late in that game, uh, our best defender is our left winger. Uh, because he's the kid who has no quit. And he's the guy that will bust his ass back past all his, his teammates to make a play in our own box. Who's that, so, Debrian? Debrian, man. Yeah, the local kid. You guys love him, man. Well, we we have been on the club since they let him slip through their fingers. Uh, so the years he was in Winnipeg, uh, there wasn't a week that went by with when I wasn't bugging the team and saying you need to get that kid back here. <laughs> How did it? How did it slip through their fingers? I, well, it, well, because he was with us. He was he, a, he was with player with us. Uh, okay, I didn't know that. And uh, and then and then he was off to Valor. Uh, but if if only because I don't want to see all of his family show up in Winnipeg jerseys to our home games, uh, which is yeah, still a problem with the uh, Batars and, and La Jeunesse uh, and some other other locals that I would really rather they wear our jerseys. And it's something we've pushed a lot. We know that uh, I'm not sure if the, I think for at least the first four years we had a, one scout and he was in Spain. Uh, so we weren't getting the local looks I think we deserve. Although uh, Quesi Leone is on, an assistant coach and is uh, tapped in with the Ravens system. Uh, so he should have an ear to the ground there. But there are local players that uh, we would much rather see if they could sink or swim in our jersey uh, than letting them go and seeing them succeed somewhere else. Well, you guys brought in a bunch of players in the offseason. Everyone across the market was calling it like almost a super team and you started off the season so well what have you kind of noticed as the season's gone on that maybe hasn't worked or that you you saw was working earlier in the season that they've kind of gone away from if there is anything well it's goal so we haven't been scoring lately so uh they started i don't know i i made a uh that's been a problem. The last two years, we've only scored 16 goals in total at home combined, like total, both last years. Uh, so last year, I actually made a sign that says home goals, and we actually changed the counter after every home goal. <laughs> uh, and this year, we got up, like, we got to 22. So we're we're at 22 now. Yeah. Uh, but we've been at, no, sorry, we're at 23. I, I missed one home game while I was away. We're at 23 goals now. Um, I didn't make a second three. When I made that, I only made so we could only go up to 32 before I wouldn't be able to make another number. Uh, and I was worried that, you know, I'd have to make those. And now with the way they're scoring, I'm not sure we're going to need them this year. So it's just uh, goal scoring. I mean, we were super happy when uh, Del Campo started scoring and we're happy that he's up near the lead, of, uh, near the lead of the league. 
uh, because last year he had a lot of chances but always seemed to hit a crossbar or a post uh, and didn't score. Uh, this year, once he started scoring, it was like he couldn't stop. So yeah. we're we're happy with his play. We really like we really like that. Um, we're happy with uh, Tier Walker is one of our our biggest brightest spots right now. Uh, we only have three U twenty one players, uh, and uh, and a lot was riding on Gabby Antonoro's shoulders. Uh, and he's an incredible player and doing really well. But Tier Walker is uh, an incredible center back, uh, young kid. Uh, local kid and uh, he, he had uh, one appearance last year and looked pretty good this year he got a quick look and then sat for a long time uh, but he's had a couple starts now he's uh, he's looking like a solid player I think the only thing uh, that he needs is more playing time uh, and with our uh, lack of U21 minutes uh, you know I think I want to see him play full 90s for the rest of the season uh, so he's been great we love that kid um, how about Didich, Manu those are, those guys have been solid for you. Aparicio has uh, been amazing. That kid is all over the place. Uh, and I met his dog, Simba. Uh, that's a great dog. Uh, but <laughs> that's, that's how he wins over the fence. Well, right, well played, Manu. Well I, played. I live in the neighborhood where a lot of the players live. So I just have to take a walk and uh, oh. get to meet them and their dogs. <laughs> that's nice. strategic, eh? Strategic by you. Hey, I'm, I lived here first, so that's on them. <laughs> they came uh, to your neighborhood. They're following yeah, exactly, you. Exactly. Got it. <laughs> but uh, no, Manny's great. Um, it just seems that there's something with the formation and with the other players around, especially uh, playing out of the back. That what formation does Ottawa play? Nick, do you know? I don't. We're, f- we're four at the back. Okay. The back and then the combination of multiple different formations between the midfield and the attackers, depending on who's on the Usually, on the usually it's a single attacker. Yeah. Uh, and then they drop two a little behind that. Um, but it's been so sloppy lately. It's been hard to tell exactly what it is. Uh, and I think on those goals you see last week, you don't see four in defense. So, uh, there's some things that are going wrong. Um, but Manny, uh, is, well, Manny served a suspension. They came into the game against Hamilton and that was his game back. Uh, and he maybe was a little rusty. He didn't have his best game, but he's a guy who, uh, who definitely can, can up it. Uh, so we're, I'm hoping he gets back to where we saw him at the beginning of the season. Um, <laughs> That's humbly said. Manu can definitely up it. Oh, he did, well, we know because we saw it. Like he was like <laughs> mighty mouse to start the year, but uh, you know, lately we we he's been playing well, but he's not contributing in those uh, those scene areas of the field. I think right now. Uh, nice, uh, Nick. Do you have any other player questions? Because I got a funny way I could kind of take this conversation. All you need. Uh, Sure, you're gonna ask about disappointments. No, no, okay. I wasn't gonna take that. What you're saying that uh, a goal problem uh, is something that you guys have right now. Our next guest that we're having on the show is actually Brian Wright, a uh, guy that's you know leading the CPL. Uh, if most I, if I show a few more, if I show talk a about few more slipping, rainbows, talk about few more rainbows, will uh, will he disappear? <laughs> I may, I don't know, but talk about slipping through your fingers. You had him locked down in a contract. I don't and know. you sent some. No, I, is, so, are the fans regretting that one? No, no one's no one's sad that Brian Wright's not here. Um, and I will say that when Brian Wright was on our field, we didn't see yeah. a Brian Wright that was trying that hard. We saw a Brian Wright that watched <laughs> balls roll out of bounds, didn't run after stuff, was was unhappy with the service he was getting, so was quitting in the middle of a play. So I great that he's finding it better where he's at now with that team. I think that's more to do with system than individual player play, but uh, no, wow. there's, uh, and I'll say the, the pride Jersey stuff last year uh, for a group that has a number of visible uh, gay, queer, trans members. Um, Bryce, fact Bryce, that, I'm, I'm just going to stop you there. It's, sure. it's a difficult conversation and it's not I kind know, of where it's, it's i wanted a, to go I, and and, oh, I understand, and i understand but on a personal level with the supporters group i'm just letting you know that yeah. there's very little love in this supporters group for him because people that did love him and cheer for him as a player in our town felt betrayed by his actions last year so, no problem okay that, that, that we could keep it like short and sweet sure. uh uh like that um final question we'll make it more lighthearted. Go for uh it. where who are you guys most scared of right now? Uh, thing. I mean, 
I, I still think Ottawa is a good team. I still think at the end, you guys are going to be fighting for a championship, um, you know, in contention at least, as for many clubs right now. Uh, who I mean, are you guys worried about? I'd be disappointed about? if we weren't. Uh, who are you worried about? Who are you scared of? <laughs> I'm not scared of any of them. I mean, the, the ones that scare me are the ones that we should beat and don't. Uh, but honestly, it's the two teams we face on the road lately and who we went to watch. Uh, because we beat Forge twice. We beat them 3 nothing. We beat them 4-3 at home. Um, but we didn't even show up to play at Forge last week. So that's a scary thing uh, because yeah. I don't know if it's because we couldn't or we just didn't. Uh, and then York is also scary. You know, I don't I don't know if they're still riding that new coach honeymoon, uh, if that's <laughs> what the success is. But the honeymoon you know, phase. They, they have the players. Um, and, you know, maybe some of these players they'll be able to keep for more than a year. But they've got the guys and they can play. So uh, those are both teams that we obviously have to do a better uh, job of preparing for. We have to do a better coaching job. We got to show the VFC. You're not scared of us? Uh, No, you're the Eagles? (laughs) (laughs) A giant thrilling machine that flies in on Callum's arm every day? Nico, I haven't seen you play yet this year. Uh, But I know you have, I think you have one yellow card. Yeah, that's oh, that's man. passion, buddy. That's passion. <laughs> I know. That's I how good. That's how good our team is. They're like, you know what, Nico? Just take it easy. I don't just, stress. Just we need, got. I this. need things to get a little bit worse so Batar can come here. <laughs> Nick, uh, I got nothing else, Bryce. This has been fantastic. <laughs> I really appreciate you joining us, man. Hey, anytime, man. Awesome. All right, uh, that it was Bryce Crossman's Capital City Supporters Group. Um, joining us on the show, Nico.